to a Judy Collins concert with my mother and I had a great time. So that's, that shows, and I went to Charlotte and saw Hart and had a good time. So that shows that I can get out and I can be a part of the community. I just want to be a part of the community like, like everybody else. There's some famous people over the years who have had mental illness too, and they've learned to cope with their mental illness, and I just want to cope with mine and live out, live out a good life. This South Carolina native, whom we will call simply Jimmy, has been struggling to cope with his schizoaffective illness for over two decades. I went through a lot of hospitalizations. I went through um, 30 or more hospitalizations. I've been diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic, borderline psychosis, and I've been diagnosed manic depressive. And I think I have um, brain disorder, caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain. Before he was stabilized, in part with the help of medication, Jimmy's thoughts tortured him. He heard voices, suffered from delusions and fits of temper, and sometimes devastating self-destructive impulses. Jimmy's mother, Jessie. You know, you'd get up in the middle of the night and the lights would all be on and the TV would be blaring and things that maybe don't sound that bad, but when you have to live with it. This is relaxing. Oh my gosh. Oh. I'm thinking about getting the great, putting that picture right, that I have right there, that I have right there, up in, here, up in this room. They add a little more color. Thanks to a program for assertive community treatment called PAC, Jimmy now lives in his own one-bedroom apartment. He just seems to be much more stable. Now he does his shopping and does his cooking, but he can. He does cook, calls me up and tells me he's cooking this, and he's still, to me, he's very dependent on someone, though. He needs needs that person to help him. Jim, good morning. How are you? Okay, we ready to do some grocery shopping? I want you to go through your refrigerator and look in your freezer Mom, and check real carefully and make up a grocery shopping that. list. Okay, you got your list? In Outreach, a packed model, staff spend about five hours a week with Jimmy in multiple contacts. A melding of support, teaching, problem solving, and therapy. I see nothing. I'll meet a nothing. Patty, she gets her medications Monday through Thursday today, and she's a one to one with Andrea. And um, we give her a phone call at night to remind her to take her evening medicines. It's a non-traditional approach. Rather than individual caseloads, typical with most mental health clinics, the team shares total responsibility for the entire client population. The team of 10 mental health professionals meets daily to review each client, but most of the direct client work goes on outside of the office. Good morning. I've got a present for you. Oh, thank you. Doesn't your place look nice? It's a kind of therapy to go, where no problem is too much. Packed director, Barbara Julius. What makes mental health might not just be a visit to your psychiatrist, it might also mean having your uh, entitlements in place, or it might mean uh, having your rent pay paid on time. Um, it might mean knowing how to have your go grocery shopping. So instead of meeting with a person and talking about how they're doing, how they feel um, on, once a month or 
twice a month. What we do is everything that it takes to keep people in the community living independently. Providing assistance with social relations, employment, and basic needs like housing and food. That corn looks pretty good. Yeah. What's the price on that? It's not bad for three fresh years. Treatment strategies are tailor-made for each client, including facilitating health care. I'll be right behind you. Over the years, clients remain in the program even though their need for services may fluctuate. Some people come in this program needing all of those services, needing um, three or four staff interacting with them on a daily basis, lots of phone call support, lots of uh, emergency uh, crisis intervention. And as they see that support there, they get better. So that people who once were in this program needing three, four, five interventions a day, every day, might at this point come in weekly for a med refill. We don't fire people when they get too sick. You know, that's a key point for us. But we keep them all. They're all here. And we take responsibility for that treatment and um, really are willing to try almost anything that it'll take to support them in getting better. This holistic treatment concept, with its shared team responsibility, hands-on individualized service, and lifetime commitment to clients, makes assertive community treatment unique. It's extremely rewarding for me because I can see changes, I can see the impact that we're having. I know that what I do each day really makes a big difference. That's why I'm here. I do it because it's worth doing. My mother raised the seven of us, right? My father didn't do that but bring in the picture. He was a good provider. The intensity of involvement with clients demands a low staff to client ratio, one staff to 10 or 12 clients. Low staff ratios pay off, reducing inpatient hospital days by as much as 85%. Reduced hospital admissions mean fewer crises, but because of the close contact and constant availability of staff, when a crisis does erupt, the client gets the benefit of early, personalized intervention. He was okay during the evening last night. He was threatening yesterday to break the windows out. Now, he's still saying the same complaints from yesterday, that the pressure's on. The voices are worse. The voices are worse. That's what's happening. And he's been working up to this over the about the last 10 days. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have, I have to go someplace. I just can't stay in that boat no more. I know he's going to hurt myself, I'm going to hurt somebody or something. It's a rough road for clients and families in crisis, sometimes involving the court, the police or sheriff, neighbors and landlords, hospital emergency room personnel, and 911. Not with PACT. The team handles it all. With the nurse's guidance, clients prepare their own medication for the week, and all staff share in making daily morning and evening medication deliveries for those who need it. All right, you take that, and you take this. It's nice and cold, too. I already feel like I'm whistling Dixie. You do. You lowered your Depakote? Yeah, I used to take three Depakotes at night, and I only take two. And the reason he did that? The memory. Your memory? Mm -hmm. To increase it? No, to decrease it. To decrease your memory? <laughs> no, <laughs> I need to make my memory come back. Okay. I get paranoid. I think people are after me. I think little creatures are bothering me. And I see things on the floor or on the ceiling. I don't see them anymore. If I take my medicine, I'm fine. If I don't take them, I get sick and I end up in the hospital. And tell me why you're taking the Depakote. The Depakote is for mood swings and the Melrose is for clear thinking. When you spoke with um, Dr. Christie last, uh -huh. you said that you weren't hearing voices. No, I wasn't has... hearing voices. I'm just having a hard time sleeping. I was in and out of hospitals because I couldn't face the fact about being mentally ill. 
I cried a lot. I didn't want to take my medicine. I said, I don't need this medicine. This medicine is not for me. This mental illness will go away. It'll go away. But the mental illness, schizophrenia, did not go away. Yolanda's mother, Lillian. From the time she was 16 until give or take 18, I could say in the average she's been in the hospital about 20 or 30 times within that length of time. After she got into outreach, it was a tremendous burden relieved off of me because at least they would check on her, they would make sure she take a medication, they would make sure if she had any place to go to the store, and I feel so much better. I did pretty good in the program. I came out and then in our hospital sometimes too. But um, I had moved into my own apartment for the first time. That's nice. You can do what you want to do in your own apartment. You don't have to share anything with nobody. If you want, if you want to walk around here with your bra underwear on, you walk around with your bra and your underwear on. Oh, I'm like, can I say? That you? That make it more interesting. Now, Yolanda is taking steps toward even greater independence, studying for her GED and learning to handle her own finances with PAC team help. Uh, can I open the bank account the bottle on Savannah Highway? I can. Okay. This is delicious. These are, this is delicious. This is delicious. Both Jimmy and Yolanda experience the documented benefits of PAC with fewer symptoms and hospitalizations and greater independence. That's my favorite. That's a guitar, that's the ocean, that's notes, that's a rose, that's a rose, that's greenery, that represents the forest. Programs for assertive community treatment offer some comfort and hope. Are you going to be the only signer on this account? Yes. Okay, the minimum to open the account is $50, and then our least expensive checks are $11.20. Without outreach, I'll be back in the hospital. I know I would. Sometimes I get upset for certain spats about the program, but spats, I wish the whole country could get it, because it would be very great for the milieu. It would probably make them feel like a whole new, brand new person. A mother in her ninth month, ready for a girl or boy, eight pounds of love, a bundle of joy. To think that a woman can have a man's child, and that child can grow up to be a successful doctor, lawyer, helper. And outreach gives me confidence because I think that it's um, given me independence and that it's given me the freedom to be myself. And when I'm talking straight, I'm making sense. And when I'm making sense, I'm making progress. And when I'm making progress, I'm getting to, the, to my goal. And my goal is to be an educator. I would like to educate people that they can do something with their lives, that there, that there is hope. There is hope out there, and there is, you know, with hope comes faith, and with faith comes hope. And you can do anything you want to if you just get your mind in the right order, you know, you can do anything.